Welcome to Pooch Booch Brewing, your one stop for kombucha scalability. So today our video is going to be about scaling up to five gallons of kombucha. I'm going to show you essentially your calculations of where you want to go from one gallon, which is one of these guys, up to about uh, up to five gallons. So generally what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how we're going to get to five gallons. And starting out, I'm going to show you how to get it into a keg, which is my preferred beginner's method to large scale kombucha brewing. Are there better vessels? Yes. So if you don't want to, if you don't have kegs laying around the house and you don't want to go out and spend money on them. They're not very expensive. You can generally find a corny keg for 40 bucks. I mean, you can spend more on them, but if you go on to Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, Friends Who Brew, you know, there's a bunch of different places out there where you can find corny kegs. Corny kegs are abundant. You can find new ones, used ones. They're all, they're all over the brew community and I find them incredibly useful because I think in the long run you're going to end up wanting to use them if you throw this into a kegerator. A lot of the stuff that you're going to be doing on this channel is going to be things that I'm going to show you that you can put into a kegerator or you can throw into your home fridge in a, in a smaller keg maybe. But generally it's going to be the upper scale of kombucha. Hey, where do you want to go with kombucha? How big do you want to go? It's questions like that. I'm going to help you answer. One of the things that we're going to work on today is getting up to that scalability, how much to use. And I'm going to show you kind of the very basic method of things that you can use around the house that you might have already to scale up. I'm not using brand new items that I'm in the process of obtaining to you know, things that you might not have. So I'm using a standard stainless steel bowl. Now, are these beer brewing bowls? Yes. So, I mean, I've, I've been starting to get into the last probably six or eight months of, you know, other brew projects, but I managed to have these uh, stainless steel bowls that I think are absolutely fantastic for what we're trying to do today. You might have a stainless steel, it doesn't need to be stainless, it can be glass. You know, the reason I, I'm using stainless steel is one, because it's easy to clean. Two, this one has a handle and it's easy to get going. Um, I'm just using these mostly as vessels more than anything else. So these are fuzzy. Uh, these are figurative. For the most part, I'm just showing where you're going to be mixing stuff. Just so you have a complex, or you have an idea of, oh, I'm just mixing this stuff, or this is simple. You can find something. You might have a stock pot at home, which is super easy. There's lots of different ways that you can do this, and I'm going to show you how I do it in a really, really simplistic way. And you can mold and modify to what items you have in the house before you go out and buy expensive things. So I'm just going to show you right off the bat, here's a couple of items. Step one we're gonna to need to brew some tea. To go up to five gallons of tea, you're gonna to wanna to brew some water. So it's generally about, it's four cups of boiling hot water. So I have one of these Pyrex uh, four gallon units. Is It's one of these per gallon. So for a five gallon batch, we're gonna do in cups of boiling water. Now, as you can see, I don't have a a 16 cup capacity um, boiling vessel. So I'm gonna do it in multiple boiling vessels. And starting out, you might not have, but you might have a whole bunch of pots around. All you have to do is bring them up to boil and then have something else where you can pour it all into to steep. So first bit, I've got that boiling now. I'll meet you back when that's finished. All right. So, we finished boiling the water. I took the water from our pan. I put it into a vessel that I was able, that I'm uh, able to steep tea in. You can find this around the house. If you've got gallon glass jars that you use to use for, if, uh, if you had gallon glass jars that you used to use for other brewing or, you know, your basic starter kombucha, 
If you do it in one of those, I just went out to wash my hands because that is very sticky. In one of those, uh, you want to make sure you put a little bit of lukewarm water at the bottom so that the hot water hitting the glass doesn't you know, cause an issue. Generally, what you're going to want to find is try and find something stainless steel. It's the best thing that you can do. I found these through a Pico Brew system uh, that a, a friend of mine gave to me. These work really well for what I'm doing on this smaller scale. I'm going to be going up and getting a larger version uh, later on. We'll bring that to you in a future video of the scaling process. But find something around the house that you can use for steeping. I'm lucky enough to have two of these. Uh, I've let these sit for about, well, <laughs> actually, let me tell you, per for five gallons, I use about one and a quarter cup of tea. Right now, I'm using a raw brewing company. This is not a sponsored video. I've just had good luck with them. I think they're a pretty inexpensive quality tea that I got off of Amazon. I'm experimenting with a whole bunch of different teas. You really want to have a black, white, green base tea. Uh, this one is an Herba Monte that we're doing today. I've done it with ribose. You can do it with general whites. You can do them with hibiscus. You've got a whole bunch of options. Right today, we're just doing a standard uh, Herba Monte. That is, I, I've already put it in just for that. So I did uh, a, a cup and a quarter, dumped it in, let it steep for about 15 minutes. I, you can let it steep for about as long as you want. We went down and watched the game, came back up here, <laughs> and uh, it's ready to go. So, next most challenge. <laughs> we have some uh, other side effects. He's our uh, sponsor of Pooch Pooch. Um, <laughs> so what we're going to end up doing is finding one of these is incredibly helpful because it's going to be able to filter out most, not all, but most of your tea bags. You can do your tea in a bag, a Mosin bag, uh, any, you can do it in a whole bunch of different options for steeping it if you don't want to actually pour it into. <laughs> we may have to do that a few times. I'm going to burn my hands if I touch that, so what we're going to do is get our mats here. I'm going to do this, and we're going to pour this guy in. There's a high likelihood that you're going to spill a bunch of this, especially if you have a dog directly underfoot. That is all the tea leaves that we're going to get out of that. The other benefit is this tea is very rich in uh, nitrogen. It's part of the food that the kombucha yeast and bacteria have to make that wonderful kombucha. What it's also really great for is putting out into your compost so that you can grow your own ingredients to stick in your kombucha. So we will go ahead and shake that guy out, move that over. We didn't lose much at all, I don't think, so that's a win over here. I did miss something. I should have put the sugar in first. That's not a problem. You can put it in before or after. It's usually just easier because if you drop it straight in, it starts dissolving instantaneously. Likely is that you're going to, even with a nice fine mesh system, you're going to have a little bit of tea in your salad. You're going to have a little bit of tea left in your, in your sugar jar. So I'm about to put a ton of sugar into this. You're going to look at me and go, wow, that's a ton of sugar. And the nice thing about a kombucha is that it eats all of this. You can use any type of sugar. The more organic, pure, the better. Right now, I got a great deal at Costco on, this is not a sponsored video, just, just to let anybody know. Uh, they, had some, they had a really great deal on Turbano sugar. Um, it has extra nutrients in it because it's a more raw form of sugar, so it's not as refined. So try and keep it to a cane sugar. We're going to do one cup of sugar per gallon that we're putting into our keg or whatever vessel we're using. Seems like a lot, but all of it's going to be eaten up. And what we're going to do right now is we are making tasty southern sweet tea. 
how many was that? Three? Four. <laughs> And five. Okay. All right, there's all of our sugar. We're almost down a bag. I had done an earlier video to this, so don't have to actually explain that theoretically. Then take a heat resistant spatula and stir it around. The benefit of this is by stirring it, you're reducing the temperature of the tea. So it makes it a lot easier for you to dump into the keg. You do not want to put your starter liquid and your SCOBY in the keg at anything higher than roughly 90 degrees. You, have a, you can hurt your SCOBY and kill off some of your healthy yeast and your bacteria if you put it in there at any other higher temperature. Um, we, could you, I don't go, here I will go and grab it. My one, beautiful wife is my camera lady. Okay, so you pick one of these off of Amazon, it opens it up, it instantly takes temperatures. I go in there, currently this tea is sitting at 143 degrees, that is way too hot to pitch your starter liquid and your SCOBY. So, we are stirring it around, stirring it around, stirring it around. You can stick your sugar in the keg, shake the keg around, it's a good workout. If that's what you want to do, do it. It'll work. You just need to get your sugar in there. I think it's a lot easier to get your sugar in there when the tea is hot before you uh, put it into the keg. Do as you, you, this is a process that you can do before, after, around. There's, there's a lot of different ways that you can do this. Right now, this is gonna go into our keg and we'll move on from there. Okay, welcome back. We're downstairs in my poorly lit utility room where I have my kegerator where I serve um, booch and clothes that are up dry. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to cool down the booch and add filtered water. So, what I ended up doing is I went out and purchased a whole home filter. More Beer has these for about $59 or whatnot. I'll leave a link in the comments. I think they're incredibly useful. I've got a carbon filter in here, which is gonna, uh, which is gonna get rid of some of the weird flavors and also it's gonna get rid of the chlorine. The reason why we wanna get chlor uh, rid of chlorine because we don't want the chlorine to kill the good bacteria and the yeast that we've got in the kombucha. Is we're gonna turn it on. You want a nice slow flow on these and I don't particularly measure this. I kind of keep an eye on it, uh, is to fill it up between the top of the cake here. You want about, you know, probably about three inches. So you are gonna fill up just under five gallons, but you want to leave that space because you need this, uh, you want the SCOBY to grow. And on top of that, we're gonna add just under a gallon of starter liquid. Starter liquid is incredibly important because depending on how fast you want your fermentation to happen, you want to add more starter liquid. And if you don't mind it taking a while, you can go with the standard two cups. But two cups of good starter liquid is the minimum. That is the minimum you want. So for me, I try and do two and a half, maybe three cups per gallon. So for this one, I mean, I mean, I'm almost using 10 cups, just under a gallon of starter fluid. But just a nice slow flow out of here, and that's gonna help cool it down. I'll leave a link in the comments. Go and find a standard thing off Amazon for you to measure temperature. Okay, thanks. All right, our next step is adding the starter liquid and the SCOBY. Now, you're gonna find that you are going to have a bunch of SCOBYs at some point in your kombucha making journey. I've got tons of them, I've only been doing it for less than a year now. Yes, here we go. We have, I have this as a starter SCOBY. Um, I brewed this as a gallon, just as kind of a backup starter liquid. That's gonna be something you're kind of wanna, going to wanna do. If you want the full five gallons that you make, you're gonna wanna make a few of these gallon batches, or as you jump up to the larger brewing vessels, make sure that you buy a brewing vessel that you can get two, three gallon full batches and enough starter liquid for your next batches. So in this instance, I've got 
Uh, I've got a very, very strong batch of kombucha here. This is gonna be a really strong starter uh, tea for us. I'm gonna pull the scobies out and we're gonna pour two or more cups per gallon. Important thing, another helpful hint, is you wanna make sure that you don't touch your scoby as much as possible with your bare hands. You can touch it with your bare hands. Really, what you're gonna find is that you can potentially infect it, create bad outcomes if you touch your scoby. Uh, you can touch it with a glove, uh, disinfect your hands or sanitize your hands before you do it. I like to use a parasilicon spatula. You go in here, yeah, I've got a nice thick scoby right there. That's about a, uh, that's about an inch almost. I pull that guy out, drop that into a some sort of container or bowl. This one looks like you can I can get at least two more scobies out of that. They start to multiply pretty quickly. New scobies will form at the top. Old scobies will float sometimes. Sometimes they'll float to the bottom. Don't worry too much about that. Like I said, this guy is a pretty thick boy right there. Okay, there we are left with that. I'm going to take our trusty funnel there, is I'm gonna measure out at least two cups per gallon. If the slow boat, one, and you just count out five of those. Perfect. So, there we go. We are almost at the top there. Here. And next, what we want to do, we're going to take that nice top new. We get this brand new scoby right here. I'll fold that guy over. I'm going to go ahead and slip him down into here. It may sink, it may rise up there, but we now have a batch of kombucha ready to go. So, second and last thing here, we got to cover this guy up. I am in the process of ordering a couple of new elastic bands. I'm considering making those. You know, you take some elastic material and you sew it into a lining on something like this. It'll go around and create a nice little seal. You're trying to keep, you know, gnats and ants and other things out of it so that you don't infect it. Uh, very important, especially with the kegs. Kegs are a little bit harder to do, but it's still doable. I've done probably five, six batches like this, and I have not had a single problem yet. I'm going to go find a rubber band. I'm going to band this guy up, and then I'm going to take you downstairs, and I'm going to show you how to heat it. Okay, final stretch. The last little bit that we're going to do is we're going to take the temperature probe. I'm using a, um, I'll, <laughs> I'll post a link or do a picture so I don't have to pull it out here. I'll pull it out in another video. But essentially it's an Inkbird. I'm using a, a double heating unit. I picked it up um, based on, it came with two heating pads. So far they've worked pretty well for me. I'll show you what they look like here. But essentially it controls two different units so I can have two different kegs working on this. They're both 15 watt systems. I just re recently bought a new system that does a little bit more power from more beer. I'll, I'll post that in the links below. But here I am, I've got the probe here in my little thermo well. I'm just gonna go ahead and probe down the thermal well so that it sits within booch there. Actually, what I'm gonna do just for a little security is I'm gonna go through here. It's a 12 inch thermal well, so it goes pretty well in the middle to get me uh, a pretty accurate reading here. Cure that guy. Okay, next what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this heating uh, pad here. Heat rises. So we are, I taped them on last time and it, it works. It's not what I wanna do this time. Blue masking tape works wonders. Okay, and then peel this back a little bit. Slide it down in. We've got our heating in there. We've got our wires all sorted out. Now we put our cloth cover on top. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop that over the edges here. Just try and do your best to make sure that you've got all the entrances blocked on this guy. So we stop any little creepy crawling critters 
getting in there. Tuck this on the insides into the neoprene. Good old rubber band. I'm just going to go around right at the edge of the neoprene there. This does the job and it's worked really well for me for the last time. I have a water heater here right now. Um, I hate this tank water heater. I really can't wait to throw in a tankless water system to make my entire life a lot simpler. And voila, now we wait anywhere between 12 and 18 days. I will go in there with a wine thief um, after about the 12th or 13th day and I start taking out small samples just to get an idea of what the taste profile is going to be. Obviously the keg system makes it a little harder to get the samples. That's why we're moving over to a larger fermenter system. On a future video you'll see my Delta 14 gallon system in work. That has a sampling valve in it. Makes it so much easier to get samples to get the right taste profile. Okay, well, thank you very much. This is Sean from Pooch Boot Brewing, and I look forward to seeing you guys. Um, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Thank you.